and welcome to Hannity. All right, tonight we begin with a Fox News alert. We have reports tonight that the Mullahs of Iran now produce enough fissile material to make a nuclear bomb. They'll have this available in just 12 days, according to a top U.S. defense official. Now, in 2015, the same process took more than a year. Now, make no mistake, if the radical mullahs in Iran, with their radical ideology, are successful and build a nuclear bomb, the United States, Israel, the entire Middle East, all of our allies, we are all in deep trouble. Uh, we'll have a lot more on this straight ahead tonight. But we also begin with this Fox News alert. The House Select Committee on China, they are now in session tonight. Needless to say, their work has never been more important. With Democrats in charge, there were no hearings whatsoever, no investigations, no scrutiny into China's malicious behavior. Now, this committee didn't even exist, but thankfully, elections matter. And now, for the first time in many years, the malignant Communist Party of China is under a microscope, and hopefully there will be consequences. Take a look. We may call this a strategic competition, but it's not a polite tennis match. This is an existential struggle over what life will look like in the 21st century. And the most fundamental freedoms are at stake. The CCP is laser focused on its vision for the future, a world crowded with techno-totalitarian surveillance states where human rights are subordinate to the whims of the party. For the time being, it's still up to us to decide if that's the future we want for our children, but it won't be for much longer. Time is not on our side. All right, now coming up, House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer. He will join us with more on our number one geopolitical threat. And by the way, he will be investigating the origins of COVID-19. We now know from Biden's own Energy Department and FBI Director Christopher Wray that, yes, that virus was made in a lab in Wuhan, oh, where coronaviruses were studied and gain-of-function research took place. Now, if anything happening in the hearing, by the way, happens, we'll bring it to you live tonight. Now, we are also here, we'll also hear tonight from Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Last night, she was accosted in a D.C. restaurant by two woke liberals that she is describing as demonic. But we begin tonight with Joe Biden, like many elderly Americans, suffering from a very steep, obvious cognitive decline. Biden has good days and he has bad days. Unfortunately, this week has not been good at all. Earlier in Virginia Beach, Biden seemed completely, totally lost, dazed and confused. You decide. My dad. By the way. You docs are good, but if there's any angels in heaven, they're all nurses, male and female. My plan that's uh, in stark contrast to, not, by the way, there's an awful lot of really good Republicans, but the MAGA Republicans are a different breed of cat. No, I, they're not bad or good, they're just very, they're very different. If they have to pay out $159,000 billion let, <laughs> less for prescription drugs, I want to make it clear, I'm going to raise some taxes. I cannot believe that man is president. Can any of you believe that? Anyway, at one point, he drifted... <laughs> exactly, no. He drifted into a very strange, long-winded story about the military nurse named Pearl. Yes, this is creepy, but let's show you again. When I was at Walter Reed all that time after a couple of craniotomies, I was lying there. And I had a nurse named Pearl Nelson, military. She'd come in and do things that I don't think you learn in medical school, in nursing school. <laughs> she'd whisper in my ear. I didn't, couldn't understand her. She'd whisper, she'd lean down. She'd actually breathe on me to make sure that I was, that there was a connection, a human connection. She even went home and brought back her pillow from her own bed because she didn't knew the one I had, the one comfortable. But I'm not joking. Not joking, and it gets worse because yesterday Biden was struggling big time also. Take a look at this. Enjoy the reception which starts after the next performance that I'm about, that's about to be announced. All right, who's going to announce it? They're going to announce it? All right. Anyone understand that? Now, in case you were wondering, uh, Joe was at an event honoring 
Black History Month, and as you might imagine, Biden accidentally said something pretty racist. You decide again. I'm honored to have presidents, all the presidents here tonight, and I want to thank him. For the, and by the way, you know, I'm not, I, I, I may be a white boy, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> I know where the power is. I know where the power, you think I'm joking. I may be a white boy, but I'm not stupid. Um, okay, I thought we judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. Now, sadly, that type of rhetoric is nothing new for President Biden. Now, the woke, hysterical word police in the Democratic Party, they elected one of the most bigoted people in the Washington swamp. For example, Biden once worked with segregationists like Robert KKK Byrd. Remember, he wanted to stop integration of our public school system. Uh, in his words, he didn't want his kids to grow up in a school that is a racial jungle. His best friend and mentor was that same senator, Robert Byrd, the former, you know, grand poobah of the Ku Klux Klan. And more recently, he told African Americans that they're not really black, of course, unless they vote for him. Then he said about uh, Barack Obama, this is storybook, man. He's clean, he's bright, he's articulate. Wow, that's storybook. For the first time ever, he said. If Joe Biden were a Republican, do you think the mob and the media would still support him after all of this? Take a look. Madam President, we have predators on our streets. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. To fully, I'm not, I'm not joking. What kind of a chance with a northeastern liberal like Joe Biden stand uh, in the South? Better than anybody else. And you don't know my state. My state was a slave state. We, we got the first sort of mainstream African American. Yeah. Who was articulate and bright and, and, and clean and a nice looking guy? I mean, it's, that's a story. They're gonna put you all back in chains. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. We got more questions. You got more okay. questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Wow. Now, the woke mob in the Democratic Party, they had no problem voting for Joe. They turned out record numbers for that guy. But will they support him again in 2024? Now, will he even be mentally and physically capable of serving another term? Now, the doctor, uh, first lady, Jill Biden, is all in and now reportedly is pushing Joe to run for that second term. I would only like to remind the Bidens that once again, that the White House, this is not their personal retirement home, although he spends 40% of his time in Delaware meeting people that we have no idea who he's meeting because they don't keep records of it. Now, one New York Times columnist even suggesting that Americans may be more inclined to vote for Joe Biden, who's soon to be 82, if he dumps Kamala Harris and chooses a more popular running mate, kind of like what the ailing FDR did in 1944. 